You don't become a champion without training your mind. It says your mind is the most powerful is your most powerful <coughs> weapon. Our sport is as much psychological as it is as it is physical. And there are two reasons for this. The first one I didn't have this in like my photo library. I had to find it. Um, do you know who this guy is? Those yeah. Are, yeah. <laughs> Um, you have to be born in like the 1970s and before to know who he is. It's Mr. Motivator. He looks like a 1970s, 80s triathlete. He's not. I think he was an ITV. But his job was to kind of motivate people. Um, what I meant by this picture is that we all are demotivated at points in, um, in time. So I did not wake up every day thinking, yay, great, I've got to train. You just don't. There are days, even weeks, where you really don't feel like doing it. It's fine. What is not fine is not bothering to develop the strategies to re-motivate yourself. If you just suffer that, endure it, and da -da -da -da, things will come good in the end, maybe they will, maybe they won't. There are tools and there are strategies that you can use to motivate yourself. That's training the mind. And the second reason you need to train your mind is because the proverbial happens. It will happen. It is not all plain sailing. That is training. That is racing. That is life. And you need to be able to have the mental fortitude, the psychological aptitude to be able to overcome adversity whether it's one off flat tire in a race or whether it's something um, that's more endured in your life. Um, training the brain, top tips. How do you gi give yourself that mental strength to endure in a race? Because racing hurts. If it doesn't hurt, training hurts, but if racing doesn't hurt, you are not doing it hard enough. So, first one, training alone. I know we all love to train in groups a lot of the time. Sometimes that's sensible because people can push you. But we race independently. So if you're always relying on other people for that motivation, you are never going to be in your own head. You have to be in your own head in training. And that means training alone some of the time. Remembering your goals, goals and your motivations are absolutely vital. It's not enough to say, I want to do Austria Ironman. You've got to know why you want it. And you've got to make it tangible. I used to put bloody post-it notes everywhere. It used to be my screensaver. In fact, it still is. But have your motivations and imprint them at the fore of, of your mind. Um, Positive visualisation sounds really trite and very American. It works. You've got to visualise yourself as strong and as successful. If you don't, you won't be. But you've also got to visualise what happens when things go wrong. So what happens when you get a flat tyre? What happens if you, um, you know, get a cramp? What happens if your goggles get knocked off? If it's never happened to you, at least you can visualise it happened to you. And you can go through the process in your mind so that when it does happen, because it will, you've developed a strategy to be able to deal with it. Visualisation, very, very important. Positive words and affirmations. I am as strong as an ox is much better than you're a wimp and you're a failure. You have to have a mantra. You have to give yourself that positive feedback all the time because... If psychologically you're crushing yourself, guess what will happen physically? You'll fall apart. My mantra was never, ever give up and smile. And I used to write it on my wristbands. I used to write it on the top of the water bottle. I used to have it on my bike, everywhere. That used to be my mantra. I used to repeat it ad infinitum. Um, inspirational videos, music, poems, and books. For me, reading about people, sounds macabre, but reading about people that have had shit happen to them is really, really empowering when they've gotten through it. It really, really is. There are so many people that have suffered worse than us. And if you read about them, 
and you think, my God, if they can encounter something, overcome it, and succeed, so can I. And so I, you know, before races especially, I used to read a lot of kind of books. So Steve Redgrave's book, Inspired, is absolutely fantastic. I used to watch YouTube videos, um, poems. Those that know me know that I'm evangelical about Rudyard Kipling's If. So I think it's an amazing poem. And if you ever read one poem and print it off and carry it with you, carry that one. It's phenomenal. But they can really, really give you a boost that you need. Um, then more practical suggestions. Never see the race or the session in the entirety. So I never started an Ironman thinking, oh God, I've got 100 and whatever miles to do. I think I've got to get to that swim boy. Then I've got to get onto the bike. Then it was 40k increments on the bike. And then the marathon was four lots of 10k and change. You break it down. So you never see everything in the entirety. If you've got a set of <coughs> intervals to do in training, just do one. Then do the next one. And then the tenth one will take care of itself. But just break it down into small manageable segments. You know, when the going gets really tough in races, you're thinking about getting to an aid station, getting to the person in front of you, getting to your support team that are X miles down the road. 